What's up guys? Welcome to Exactly Gaming. My name is Zach and today we are back with more 60 parsecs. Last time we left off, we are uh we're doing good. Despite everybody's long faces, we may be starving, but at least Dee Dee's caffeinated. And a caffeinated captain is a successful captain, despite the fact that we have already lost some people. So uh in the last episode we did have some losses, but you know what? You gotta you gotta lose crewmates to gain crewmates is what they say that's what they say i don't make the rules so uh in this episode let's see if we can just keep hanging on in star raiders captain there's an ancient monument nearby my scanners indicate the site was previously occupied part of the structure seems to have been unearthed for a while whoever left here whoever was left here in a hurry there is still some equipment left i think i can identify some tools down there in the excavation site care to have a look around and see if we can find anything useful yeah why not go ahead and peek around they'll both eat some food and Megan is going to go out and explore because we have to keep exploring everything. Just got to do it. Star Tower. Let's go do the cave. Let's do the cave first. Emmett's not doing great, not going to lie. But you know what? I, I believe in him. I think he'll be okay. Since we're going to a cave, let's bring that. And let's bring... That's it. You don't need anything else. Just bring those two. And just hurry back to me. All right. Next day. <clears throat> day 27. All right. You descended downward, uh, you descended toward the bottom of the excavation site. It wasn't hard to see what spooked the previous occupants. At the base of the monument was a disturbing relief showing a flying creature made of pasta and meatballs. The horror. The memory of that atrocity will follow you for a long time, and unfortunately, there was little value, of value left at the site. You stumbled upon a digging utensil of alien origin, but decided that your trusty shovel already does the job well enough to not be replaced. Megan set out spelunking. Damn, I wanted the alien shovel. Ah. Damn. No alien shovel for us. Something fell from the sky in a flash, and now you're surprised that we are surrounded by a swarm of red-winged somethings. Of course I anticipated this. Uh, this is scenario number 87,394B. The small creatures are flying around into our walls in waves, causing the hull to reverberate like a speaker. Are you God? They reverberate. For generations, we have been searching for the one who thinks outside the hive. Each jump from planet to planet decimates us. Are you the one? I, for one, Captain, believe you deserve a cult following, Captain, but the choice is yours. All right, let's let's go ahead and say no because we don't have the the artifact because we did give it to Megan for her her cave spelunking. The swarm of tiny red flies spoke to you through the walls uh, through the hull's vibrations. You answered by shouting through the window, which obviously was not an adequate response. The swarm repeated its initial question louder and louder. Fast on your track to becoming deaf, you threw a couple of insults and a can of soup at the aliens. The latter worked. The swarm followed the trail of leaking soup, accepting your involuntary peace offering with angry flight patterns. The soup conquers all yet again. All right, and we're out of soup. But we had what? How many soups we got? Twelve. We're fine. We're fine. Let's uh, see what we can craft. Maybe craft another one of these. Another communicator would be good. The beings who once inhabited this world consume more cheese than should be physically possible. Check out the scanner. Those little foil triangles everywhere with smiling cows on the label? Those are cheese wrappers. <laughs> a few of those smiling cow cheeses are still sealed. This one was right outside the shuttle. The label says it won't expire for another million years. Want to try it? Uh, let's look at the handbook and let's use that handy dandy handbook of ours and see if it's a good idea or not. And the handbook's gone. Uh, you search the address in the handbook for the official uh, guidelines on ancient, uh, trying ancient but unexpired alien cheeses. The only relevant advice you found was try to always eat a balanced diet and avoid excess sugar, even in survival situations. Instead of eating the cheese, you used a few items to run scientific experiments on it. The triangle, triangular foil wrapper proved practically indestructible, causing some of the items to be damaged. You could use some more rations. Megan is still exploring the outside world. Crafty completed communicator. So we broke the tape and we lost the book. Good, always good. And we don't have the materials to repair the tape. Wonderful. Look how look how splendid we're doing. The radio waves just won't stay silent, Captain. The string of information we're currently receiving is a mix of Morse code, binary, and the sound of a Geiger counter. Whatever is attempting to contact us might be trying uh, must be trying everything but the kitchen sink. If regular modes of communications are failing us, perhaps we should try unorthodox methods. Maybe like the fucking communicator. Maybe. Maybe that. Day 30. Using our communicator, you responded to the mixed transmission with some of our own blips and bloops. You didn't expect much to come of it. Not hoping for much won't leave you disappointed often, as was the case here. The transmission stopped, but nothing else changed. Crafty completed. New out of available mask. Right. And I'm starving, but I can be starving another day. 
Oh, rats. You know those scratching sounds coming out of the ventilation shafts at night? We have rodents, Captain. They must have hitched a ride from Earth. If the infestation isn't handled, the rats will eat your food supplies. Then probably you. How will you deal with this problem? Well, I don't have a book, and apparently that's the only thing that kills rats, so I'm gonna do nothing. Next day. Day 31. All right. Hey, Megan's back. You didn't do anything about the rat infestation and discovered yesterday, and just like I predicted, they're over on the ship. You've braved being bitten and somehow caught the rats with your bare hands. All of them. I'm impressed. Let's just hope they didn't have rabies. Megan survived her spelunking extravaganza. She appears frail, in need of a meal, and disturbed, uh, but the point is that she's still with us. You pay attention as she begins to regale you with stories of her subterranean journey. The darkness was thick, but Megan had a lighter. It got dropped, reducing its usefulness. She found an untouched mineral vein. You're fully briefed. Oh, and Megan found found some old paintings depicting ancient aliens coming to this planet to acquire soup. Was this world some kind of intergalactic soup hub? I'm still trying to figure out how or why tomato soup is available universe-wide. Anyway, Megan brought back rations. All right, and we're still starving, but we made the armor. And I got hurt, so we're going to do everybody gets food. She gets healed. We can work on upgrading something, like maybe the communicator. And then we can let Megan rest. And go on to the next day. And hey, the Petersons. Captain, the family of sentient roaches you shared mercy to have really made themselves at home here on the shuttle. The Petersons are currently renovating their roach hole to include a white picket fence, complete with a mailbox shaped like a miniature nuclear bomb. All the noise from the construction is making it difficult for you to sleep. The Petersons may understand if you ask them to politely keep it down. It's never too it's never good to let bad feelings build up between neighbors. Will you speak to them? Yeah. Yeah, go talk to them. Why not? Let's go, let's go have a chit chat with them. The, the Petersons are chill. They'll understand. You approached the roach hole and spoke calmly to Pete Peterson, the patriarch of the family, about not rousing such a roachly ruckus late at night. The kindly roach apologized profusely and confessed the experiments that gave his family sentience also left him a bit hard of hearing. He invited you over for spaghetti, although you had to decline due to your inability to fit inside his kitchen. Uh, upgrade completed. New item available, stereo communicator. You're not really complaining, Captain, but I know you're hungry. All right. And Megan is weak. Oh, so she needs a first aid kit as well. So maybe we'll let... Ooh, I need... So I need to recycle, honestly, at this point of food. I mean, we have, how many, 13? Yeah, we'll be fine. I'm detecting an ancient uh, structure very nearby, totally camouflaged by the surrounding landscape. The front resembles a yawning face. It's a temple, a secret one. There could be treasure inside. Which route will you take to explore the temple? Well, I'm average strength and I'm just straight up dumb. So probably just need to use my average strength then. All right, next day. We gotta make a first aid kit for Megan. She's not looking too good, and she's our only explorer, so if she dies, we're kinda shit out of luck. You chose the path through the secret temple that tested you physically, but you failed to pass even the simple obstacle course. That was, I also failed to pass even that simple sentence. The temple shook as the giant face on its facade awoke, and a booming voice said, Oh, so sorry. Thank you for playing Tales of the Secret Temple. Bye for now. Megan appears to still be in poor health. Uh, and apparently Dracula runs the fucking Tales of the Secret Temple. Uh, a big, dumb Dracula. Maybe a Frankenstein-Dracula hybrid there. Uh, Pete Peterson is requesting if you can help him make some improvements to his family's home. Captain, the roaches next door are building a family fitness center, complete with discarded screws and washers for weights. Pete says he just needs something heavy to finish the project. What will you lend him? Yeah, borrow the shovel, man. Why not? Weak and loyal. Just how I like them. All right, I thought we recycled the fucking soup. Did it not give me... Oh, fuck, it didn't give me any chemicals, so I did that for nothing. Why does soup give power and... Okay, okay. Whatever. Whatever. Let's recycle this lighter. It's already a little busted, so I think we'll be fine. And we gotta make... Yeah, because she's weak. We gotta make her something. Gotta make her a first aid kit. Unless food will help. Try feeding her again. Nope, she's crazy. Shit. Well, damn it. <laughs> Done went and got crazy on me, but we got a sock for that. I do have a sock for that, so let's make you not insane. Let's give you some food, and you know what? Let's give you some food. Captain, don't alert Megan, but something got the drop on me. It appears to be some kind of droid. It just activated. A web sack on its back carries flotsam, metal scrap, bits of plants, and other oddities, including something which looks like a skull. It's extending its grip to open the airlock. Shall I secure the outer airlock door and deny the robot entry? Nah. Nah, let it in. I'm sure it's fine. Or it'll kill us. 
one or the other. <laughs> Day 35. Despite the little droid's creepy approach, he decided not to secure the airlock. I must admit, I was dubious about such a course of action, but the machine turned out to be quite the resource. Once inside, it fluttered about, gathering up dust, metal shavings, and detritus. It whirred a little, then, out its other end, popped little orbs of material, one of which was a ball of edible organics, a snack. It finished cleaning up and left while you both sat munching its robo-poop. <laughs> Megan remains weak, you're not hungry anymore, Megan became sane again. Hey, and we're working on that first aid kit for you. The shuttle's in danger, Captain. We're on the path of a vicious gale of nasty chemical composition, which is threatening to sabotage our air filters. They need to be protected, but I lost the remote control due to micro damage from the winds. They have to be closed manually. This toxic tornado is close enough that going out there with, without the proper equipment would be suicide. If you can do anything, now's the time to act, Captain. Yeah, we got a mask. Megan and I will take turns. Huffing mask air. <laughs> Day 36. That was a close one, Captain. It was a good thing you had the proper gear to get out there and manually close the air filters. Even with your mask, braving the toxic winds wasn't something you'd like to do ever again. The shuttle will get a bit stuffy before I have the chance to filter in any fresh air, but it beats suffocating to death. Once the winds pass over us, we'll reopen the filters and things will turn back to normal. Megan appears to still be in poor health. Damn, alright. Greetings, tax evader. Your taxes are 29,000, three years overdue. The black sphere beeping these words menacingly is an intergalactic tax collector. I let it in because its credentials looked absolutely legitimate, and civil servants are due respect. It deemed you liable for this entire planet. I knew a surprise visit was in order, and here you are. I will begin by confiscating your ship. Step outside. Or else. The sphere commands, do something, Captain. Uh, well, I'm gonna punch it, because I'm very dumb, and I don't think I'm gonna do well otherwise. Day 37. A spherical tax collector was requisitioning your ship. You dragged it to the ship's droid service socket. It resisted, but like an intergalactic Sisyphus, you rolled it closer, closer, inch by inch. It sputtered legal forms at you and slipped away. You lunged, pulled a muscle, and pushed the sphere in place. I reprogrammed the tax collector to see you as a, a law-abiding friend. You didn't want to gossip about metal polish, so it gave you advice on deduce, deducting nuclear blast-related purchases from your taxes and left. Does your torn muscle still hurt? Nah, we're fine. Caffeinated and vigorous. You, on the other hand, need that first aid kit. The wind, which was blowing ceaselessly for the past few hours, has uncovered part of a sculpture near the ship. A cow's muzzle, open, as if in expectation. A sacrificial spot, perhaps? I was wondering if we have anything on hand to offer up to the carving. Not that I'm superstitious, of course. I'd consider it a science experiment. Alright, let's let Megan get out there. She's gonna go to the temple. Yeah, she's gonna bring some armor, she's gonna bring the cow sculpture, and she's gonna bring the better communicator. And take a food. Yeah, take a food. Alright, and she's doing alright. And everybody's doing alright. Day 38. You decided you'd rather not offer anything to the cow statue, and waited for it to be covered by the sands once more. The more you thought about it, the hungrier you got. Something about its wide open mouth kept coming back to you. Your next serving of soup won't come soon enough. Make it departed to explore the temple. Watch the horizon for a safe return. And to remain vigorous. Alright. There's nothing to report, Captain. I suggest you... Captain, would you mind covering your mouth when you yawn? I thought you got a good night's sleep. Wait, could this be... boredom? Yes, I have heard that you humans need excitement in their lives to function properly. How curious. Captain, you're sitting in a state-of-the-art space shuttle. Drifting through the deep cosmos full of wonder and mystery. Can you at least pretend you're having a good time? No. I don't wanna. I'm not fucking gonna have a good time. I think space is fucking stupid. Yesterday started pretty slow and boring, and it stayed this way. I'm not programmed for your entertainment, Captain, so don't count on me to keep you occupied. If they wanted you to have fun in the shuttle, they would have installed the clown computerized assistant instead. You better start... You, you better start starving. You better fucking start starving. You're starving, Captain. Better grab a bite. Uh, Captain, there appears to be an error. Error. I am broken. Please fix me. System error. Quick action required. System error. Please, Captain, do something. Do something. I'm not sure how long I can stay, stay operational. Act fast. Well, I'm dumb and wimpy. <laughs> Ooh, dumb and wimpy. Which, which, you know what? Let's see if my dumb ass can do it. Let's see. Why not? Why not? Let's make a lighter. Who gives a shit, right? We'll eat something, sure. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> We're just playing it fast and loose here. Day 40. Good morning, Captain. Thank you for fixing the error that made it difficult for me to communicate. You're quite the hacker, I admit, am I? Well, that's a relief. Who knows what would have happened to me if it wasn't for you. Thank you, Captain. Crafty completed lighter. All right. 
We're getting some communications coming through, Captain. It's very muddled and hard to decipher, but I think I caught a fragment of it. It's a repeating message, and it goes something like this. Cow like, we like, no cow, no like. Huh, I have no idea what that means. If this is some kind of riddle, it surely requires more lateral thinking than I was programmed with. Should we do anything about the message? Yeah, but put a mask on. I don't know. I don't fucking know, Astro. Day 41. The eerie message we got over the comms about somebody really liking cows gave you an idea. You grabbed the mask from your inventory, fitted it on your head, got down on all fours, and started mooing. I'm not 100% certain that was necessary, Captain, but the fact is the message stopped. Nothing else of note happened, though, so it might have just been a prank at your expense. Megan has returned from her temple trial. She appears to be in poor health, full, and traumatized, but more importantly, she's still with us. That's a good... Poor, in poor health, full, and traumatized. All the three things I like on my crew. You nod as she begins to describe her brush with the divine bovine. Megan says her skin tingled and a demonic apparition manifested from the shadows. Was the place haunted? She claims to have banished the demon with the artifact, which then shattered. Perhaps it overheated? There were some storerooms containing vats of chemicals. Megan collected plenty. Where does all this soup come from? It's the greatest mystery of the universe. And everything. Anyway, Megan brought back some soup. End of expedition report. Megan should get some rest now. Alright, she definitely will. She's loyal and tired. That's how I like it. Captain, there's more abnormal racket coming from the Peterson's roach hole. The problem appears to be an argument between Pete and Patty Peterson concerning Pete's opinion that boric acid isn't as bad as they say. While some disputes are normal among an isolated group of individuals, this sounds like a serious problem. And, well, they are your neighbors. Will you check on the Petersons? Yeah, why not? Why not? Let's check on them. Day 42. You helped Pete and Patty Peterson work out their domestic dispute. Pete was so grateful he invited you over for some time to play a few Tarsi of Texas Hold'em. But you declined, deciding that you were too big to fit inside their home. You, be you felt better about improving your relationship with your neighbors, though. Hey, that's good. Always improve the neighbors with the Pete. Always improve... I can't talk. Make the Petersons happy. That's my goal. I'm going to end this one here for the day. We're going to see what today, day 42, has in store for us next time on our conquest to explore all the lands on Mootopia. But Megan's going to get us there. She's loyal and she is here. So we're going to send her off in the next episode. I sure hope you guys did like this one. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And, of course, I'll see you next time. Bye.